Hello and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be sharing my operations dashboard with you. Now, I had originally just planned to share the databases with you over a number of days and then show you how you could build out the dashboard yourself. But I was feeling a little bit festive and I thought, wouldn't it be just fun to give away the dashboards in their entirety? I plan to sell these in the new year in my store but you're gonna be able to access them alongside all of the templates that I've shared so far, all the way up until December 31st. So if you want access to this full operations dashboard, all you have to do is sign up to my newsletter. There is a link in the description. And in today's video, we're going to go through the whole thing. I'll show you how to edit it, customize it, and make it your own. So let's go ahead and dive on in. Welcome to your operations dashboard. In this video, I'm gonna walk you through it, how it works, how to customize it and make it your own. If you are new to Notion, start by clicking duplicate. It will be somewhere in this top right hand corner and that's going to add this template to your Notion account. Now, if you need help and support at any point in time, you can click on this toggle. It's gonna to open up and give you some links. You can click them and access support. And thirdly, if you are new to Notion, the way it works as a quick overview is it's broken down into three parts. So we have pages, that's essentially what you're looking at here. And then we have content blocks. So we have this call out, we have dividers, toggles, this is a table of contents. And the way that you access these content blocks is just by clicking this plus icon and selecting what you want. The other way to do it is to do a forward slash Say we add some text here, you would just start typing. You can click these six dots and you can turn it into anything. So if we turn it into a page, you see it automatically turns into a page. If you want to delete it, just click again and hit delete. So we have pages, content blocks, and then we have databases here. And the way databases work is we can pull in all kinds of views. We can add filters, we can group them. We can use them in a number of ways. If you want, you can add them directly on the page itself, but I find that it can be a little bit risky because if we delete the original source database, it can be a little challenging to get it back. So what I've done with this template, if we scroll all the way down to the bottom, you'll see I've added them into a toggle here called backend databases. And so these are all the original databases and all of the views that we're gonna use are included here as well. Now, what that means is that if I add them anywhere on this page, say here we have our scorecard, I'll just hit enter, forward slash, I'm gonna do a linked view of database. And I'm gonna pull in my scorecard here. You'll see here I can select the view. So if I do by quarter, it's going to give me my scorecard. And what I can do is I can still customize the name here. I can add filters if I want. I can edit the original database right here on the linked view. I could do anything I want to it, but what it means because it's a linked view and you know it's a linked view because of this little arrow here is if I delete it by accident, it's not going to mess with the original. It's still here. We can easily just add it back again. And so that's where all of your source files are. And again, if you want to customize them on the original source file, you can go ahead and do that. But just remember, if you delete these ones at the bottom, it's going to be a little bit harder to get it back. So with all of that in mind, let's walk through the template. It's broken down into five parts. We have view and manage your team, add and manage SOPs, access tools and resources, keep track of documentation, and then track metrics and review your scorecard. So step one here is view and manage your team. And again, we have some written instructions here. You can include a little overview just by typing. And then we have your team directory here. So to add a team member, what you're gonna do is just hit new and you will give them a name. You can upload the headshot. If you want to include details, by the way, these can open up into a side preview and you can add more details here if you wish. We'll give it their, we'll share their pronouns. We'll add their role. Now I've just got owner here, but you can just start typing a new role in and it's gonna be able to create that. If they have multiple roles, this is a multi-select column, so you can add multiple roles to customize, edit, or change any. Just click these three dots, change the color, change the label, hit delete as necessary. Then we have departments, same thing. You can customize these. 
and then you're going to put in the date that they've joined and based on that it's going we've got a formula here that's going to calculate how many days they've been at the company which can just be helpful to know and then we have a column for salary here and at the bottom I've calculated the sum so that when you're adding a lot of team members you can see how much you are spending collectively on your team's salary. Now say you don't want to show this, maybe it's private, you can click on this and you can delete the column or you can hide it in view. The other thing you could do is change the currency. So here we've got number format as US dollars, but you can click in here and you can change it to your preferred currency. Now this second tab here is the exact same database. But what we've done is clicked here, I've changed the layout to gallery. So we've got the gallery view here. I'm showing the headshot and I've also grouped it by department. So I can see my whole team, but I can see it based on the department. And here we've got numbers to count all of the team members, that department itself. So there's lots of different views that you can customize. You just come in here, you can change the layout to your preferred look. And then same with properties, you can choose what you want to show and what you don't want to show. So here I've got it, the name, and then I've got pronouns and then role, but you can customize that and make it your own. So that's where you're gonna view and manage your team. Step two is add and manage SOPs. So again, we've got some instructions here. You can include a little overview. And then if we click on this first table, this is just a table view. And so you're gonna give your SOP a name, choose the type. Again, you can customize this, give it a use case, whether it's started or not. So you would give it status to customize this column, hit edit property. And a similar thing, you just click in, change the label, change the color, delete as you want or add a new one if you want to. And then you're going to select a review date for quality insurance, making sure everything's up to date and it's going to calculate the review status if it's due or not. Now, if you have certain teams working on this, you can click in here and you can add your team members that are in Notion. You can also change this to manager, lead, whatever you want it to be. Now here we have your tech stack. So this we are gonna look at in just a little bit, but this is linking to a different database where you're gonna store all the tools that you're using in your business. And quite often when you're putting together standard operating procedures and workflows, you're going to be using certain tools. So this allows you to click in and select the tools from your tech stack that you'll be using to manage this. And then here in the last two columns, these are automatically filled in. So just who last edited it and who the last edited time as well. So that part is automatically calculated for you. Now under new, if we click this little drop down, you'll see here I've included my own template for SOPs. You can add your own or create your own by hitting new template. But what that looks like is whenever you want to create a new one, if you want to use this template, just select it or you can hit new here. We'll just put new SOP and then I'm going to be able to open this up. You'll see it opens up in a side preview. You can open it up in full page or change the view, but we can see if there's nothing on the page, we can select from the templates. So if I collect, select SOP template here, you'll see here we've got a template and you can use this. We've got a table of contents. You can embed a video here just by clicking in and sharing the link. Last updated terminology. So if there's set terminology, your team need to know an overview, documentation and resources, and then your step-by-step -step instructions. And you can add anything else you want in here too. So that's templates. If we click on the second tab for progress, all we've done is same template, but we have changed the layout to board and I've customized properties here as well to show the review status and the use case. And it's a simple case if you could just move this across here as you're working on it so you can keep track. And again, if you would prefer other views, you can filter that there. Step three are tools and resources. So we have two databases here. The first one is our tech stack. So to, to add a new tool, we're gonna upload an image of the tool. And this is gonna give us a nice gallery view. The tool name, use case, how much it costs monthly, and then it's gonna automatically calculate your annual amount. This is times 12, so that could be inaccurate. If you want to change this, you can always come in here and do 
edit property and you could change this formula to a number and you could turn it into whatever currency and you can work it out that way. Say you've got like a yearly plan but you can save two months when you buy the yearly plan. You can do that if you prefer. I'm just going to put that back. You would add the URL. If you have an affiliate link, you can store it here. It can be really helpful. Username, password for access. Again, use that at your discretion. You might not want to include that in your Notion account. That is really up to you. If you want to add any tags, you can do that. That's optional. And again, we've linked to SOPs. So if you have not yet linked to an SOP, you can come in here and you can do the use case. And again, you would just unlink any page as well. So you can link this to multiple SOPs. Quite often we use tools in a number of different ways so you can do that. Here we have your tools overview so same database but all we've done is change it to a gallery and I'm showing the use case and the monthly amount. And then this third column is your resource library and this doesn't look like much because what we've done is changed it to a gallery but if I just switch this out to table you'll see here you just give it a name, use case, what type it is. And again, this is really important that you select this because this is what we're using for our documentation in step four. Choose the status, source, any attachments, tags, and again, we can link it to SOPs and we've got last edited by and last edited time. Then we have our review date and review status. And we can move this over. It's probably better in that order. So that's our resource library and so we've got our tools and resources. Now we want to keep track of important documentation. So this might be, we've got two, two tabs here, documentation and legal. The only difference between those two, if we come back up to resources here, this is the database it's pulling from, is the type. So you'll see here I've got legal and you'll see here I've got documentation. And so down here what I've done is I've clicked here, I've made it a list. And then I've applied the filter to show documentation. And I've applied this filter to show legal. And so this could be any documentation that you have in your business. I've just included a simple example here. And then under legal, I've included things like privacy policy or terms and disclaimer. What you have for your business will be unique to you, but separating it out like this can be really helpful so that things are exactly where you need them to be and you're not having to search through all of your different databases to figure out what it is that you're looking for. And then step five, track and review scorecard. So this is a basic scorecard. We've got the months here. You can always customize that and change it to Jan 2022 if you want to be specific. But we are filtering by adding a quarter here and the year here. And then you'll see here, I've applied a filter to the year. So you're only seeing the results for this year. And then you're going to put any goals that you have here. And then I've just got some metric columns and these are all numbers at the bottom here. You can calculate the average, the median, the sum. You can really change that to whatever you want it to be. And you'll see here, this is US dollar. But again, you can click in here. You can change the label. You can change it from a number. If we edit property, you can change the number format. So it really depends on what it is you want to track for operations. You would just put that in here to delete any of these columns. Just click and either delete or hide in view. And to add a new one, you would just come in here and you would add whatever it is that you want to track. And again, at the bottom, say if we did number here we'd give it a different name but you could come in here and you can customize that out there and that is your operations dashboard so it's really a place for you to manage your team manage your processes make sure everything is in one place you can easily access it and that you're always tracking your performance because this really helps with quality assurance so enjoy and if you need any help at all Remember that you can always click in here and reach out for support anytime. Thank you so much for watching, my friend. I hope that you found this valuable. Like I said, access to this template is available for free until December 31st. All you have to do is sign up. So you might as well sign up, add it into your Notion account, and then it's there and ready for you, even if you want to wait until the new year to use it. And as always, if you have any questions or you just want to chat, meet me in the comment section and we'll start a conversation. Thank you so much for being here and I'll see you again tomorrow where I'll be sharing another dashboard with you.